Hey, what's up, Vermintide community? This is a build I've been using for quite a while. Uh, this is a build that makes the Sienna Pyromancer into a a highly melee focused build with a, a bit of you know ranged utility here and there. The build utilizes Hunter with a high crit chance to br uh, bring out the damage DPS of her. Very, very high, uh, very high attack speed, you know, regular sort. The basic sort that she has has a very high base attack speed compared to her other weapons. So, uh, this was one of those optimal weapons to use for this build, aside from the flail. Uh, this build uses swift slaying with a crit chance on the sword crit chance on the staff crit chance on the trinket as well as a uh, self spire what was it uh... it's the ability that gives you extra five percent crit chance when taggable enemies die uh, but I'll, I'll put up the abilities on screen. Well, you probably saw the abilities on the screen uh, before the main video started. But yeah, uh, you know the name of that that uh, talent point already. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really being too serious in this run. I was just trying to see how much fun I could have. Uh, with the PS4 gyro aim at that. Uh, I played this game on both PC and PS4. The reason I'm not uh, sh recording this on PC is because um, I haven't leveled up all the characters. I haven't leveled up all the characters on PC because it's hell of a grind leveling these characters up. I still haven't leveled up Corellian on the PS4 version. All the other characters are level 30 besides Corellian. But yeah, guys, this this build gets pretty fucking crazy. Just make sure that you guys are making sure that you take advantage of the hunter trait on her staff. So essentially, with your high uh, crit chance while you're on high overcharge, and also high attack speed on high overcharge due to her trait you can really basically have an extra 25% damage on enemy on, on any enemy type that you want at a for the duration of the hunter you just have to reapply it here and there based on which enemy type that you want to clear out so essentially you can just throw a barrage at a armored enemy throw a barrage at a you know infantry type enemy so you can gain your extra 25% damage increase due to hunter it, it, it gets pretty fucking wild pretty fucking wild this is a uh, on legend also empire and flames legend uh, I, I think I'll just add a little clip to show me going into this level I clip the intro out of it where you're just walking and not doing nothing I should just uh, include the part where I queue up. So I'm going to make sure that part is in there. But yeah, this is just with bots. No nothing too serious. Just trying to have fun with the build. Yeah, I'm not really going for any grams or tones. Just uh, trying to clear the level. See how easy it is for this particular build to handle clearing a le uh, level on Legend. The other characters are basically specced out to complement the Sienna build, essentially, uh, with Crewbar having pace strikes spread to the allies, so Sienna gets an additional 10% attack speed from crew bar you know 
attacking the horde, clearing horde. So it makes her already crackhead uh, attack speed even better. I don't think I was able to quite apply the hunter uh, perk to this horde right here, this patrol. Overcharge was too high at the moment. No time to cool off. Could have tapped it though, but I wanted to save the uh, bots. I got my hunter crate. I mean my hunter trait. But yeah, remember, got to get the most out of out of it by reapplying it here and there. Swift slaying coming in handy right there. So yeah, the bots are just gonna let him uh, kill me like that. Yeah. So yeah, swift slaying, high overcharge, attack speed, pace strikes. Uh, I think her attack speed is a tad bit quicker, even more uh, redonkulous with the flail. But I prefer the horde clearing capabilities of the straight sword, just regular old straight sword, no fire sword for me here. The fire sword's uh, base attack speed is pretty low. I just don't I don't like it that much. I think the the, fly, the flame sword is best suited for the battle wizard or burn damage build. Just basically spam the first attack over and over and over again, the first charge attack. And it, it's I think it's absolutely crazy how many criticals you hear uh, seeing a dish out as you're swinging the sword. It's, it's just so, it feels so good. This build feels so damn good to play. Makes Sienna feel like a damn badass. Straight badass in turn, when it comes to the melee. Her melee usually isn't that great. I feel like her her regular straight sword is pretty much her best melee weapon next to the flail. Okay guys, so for this part here I was trying to see if I can aggro the boss that was outside of the, the map. So I can actually test this build out on him, see how much I can fuck him up. But, you know... I wasn't really able to. I actually, actually, no my It wasn't that I wasn't able to. I wasn't able to maneuver into this tight space with uh, him being stuck in here. Wasn't able to appreciably test out the abilities of this build because the boss got stuck up in this little super tiny tight space you know with the fucking throw up in there and all that shit you know as as you can see I'm being fucking hit in the back right when I'm trying to uh, blast them up in the face and shit uh, it always happens like that if you if you gotta arrange anything and you're you know you're holding off of the boss about to fuck them up with your range shit there's always going to be some little enemies coming up behind you somewhere, some some kind of way that ruins your day, you know. It ruins your ass whooping that you was going to give the boss. And as you can see there, I didn't even get to uh, damage him with the burning head because uh, he went into the invincible animation. But yeah, that's enough for that bit there. Uh, I wanted to see if I could... You know, see how much DPS I could dish out on the boss, but nope, I was thwarted. But yeah, I just gotta remind you guys, this is uh, me using PS4 gyro aim. Because the game has this feature built into it. I wish more PS4 games allowed this or utilized gyro aim because essentially... It's the closest you can get to mouse and keyboard on console if you learn to learn to use it really well. But right now I'm kind of using I have to use a combination of stick, you know, right uh was it yeah, right stick camera control plus gyro aim. 
because gyro aim cannot allow you to turn make permanent turns you know you can't turn fully you you'll just look back in the direction you're looking in uh before you move the controller to look at something so you have to use the right stick to make full and permanent turns you can look in a direction with gyro aim but you cannot turn in that direction unless you turn your entire body in that direction and keep your body in that direction but yeah gyro aim is pretty damn fun once you get used to it it is so fun it makes this game a lot more interesting to play on PS4 by far. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm clearing them right there. You, you're starting to see the see the this build shine right there. Melee beast. Uh, yeah, I I went to my usual uh, habit is going to grab the tomes and whatnot. I'm just not trying to grab tomes. I'm just trying to have fun. Have fun on Legend. Yeah, I, I really hate it when my teammates or bots push back enemies that I'm trying to hit with a melee. A little kind of annoying. It happens though. Yeah, I have noticed that using gyro aim, you can get pretty rusty if you don't actually think to use it. You gotta actually actively think about using the gyro aim, otherwise you'll just default to using the right stick as your control method, your camera control. I didn't quite utilize the hunter perk quite that much right there. Could have could have came in more in handy. You know, as I said, you gotta reapply Hunter. See a little arrow down there? Hunter trade apply it. Here come the wave clearing. Absolutely redonkulous. Absolutely redonkulous. Feels so damn good. Take what ammunition you can. The only other build that comes close to uh, the wave clearing, the just pure mashing, you know, the attack button melee wave clearing that this build does is low health uh, zealot. Yeah, low health zealot. Seltzpire. With uh, swift slang, with claymore, with his uh, great sword. And, uh, was it? Power versus, uh, armored and infantry, and power versus, uh, race on the ranged weapon, and power versus race on the melee weapon. That's what Seltzpire Zealot built. The yeah, attack speed Zealot built. Uh, that shit absolutely deletes hordes. Zealot built. Great sword. You know, you spec out your properties properly. Deletes hordes. That was a great shot right there. Great gyro aim shot. The way you're going to notice that I'm using gyro aim is when the camera movement begins to look really smooth. If, if, you, if you see the camera movement looking really jerky like that, I'm using analog for an example. I think it's really, really, really convenient to be able to just, you know, switch between the two on the fly. Focus on analog one time, focus on gyro aim the other time. So fun, man. Challenging, though. Really challenging at, at first. You're going to have hell of a time trying to learn gyro aim at first. Man, I really wish more PS4 games uh, utilized this. I 
I know you can uh, modify your PC settings to take advantage of gyro aim, but I think it's a little confusing from what I've seen. It's not really built into Vermintide 2 on PC. It's built into PS4 Vermintide 2. You know, kind of sad uh, that I'm kind of playing PS4 Vermintide though. I think I picked this game back up because one of my friends had gotten into playing it more often. But then I had a fallout with that same friend, but I'm still playing it. It was a, uh, it was this guy that got mad that I didn't praise him for being good with a character in Tekken when that same character needed a lot of work to be done. I mean, it is what it is. I just don't want a lot of people. I'm that guy who gives you the hard, harsh truths rather than the sweet lives. If you ever, if you ever seen that meme right there, you see everybody going to the guy with the sweet lies, you know, Stan. He's selling his sweet lies, but I'm the guy with the harsh truths over there, not getting no customers. That's who I am. I mean, just is what it is. I'm not gonna lie to people like that. I don't feel right lying to people. set right up I love it when they line up it's a little weird switching between gyro and analog stick though a little bit weird analog stick feels so static and you know not so accurate whereas I have to focus on moving my arms and wrists for uh, gyro aim. Sometimes I feel like I can't quite move my wrist far enough to a side quick enough to track enemies. That's one thing about gyro aim. Uh, it's quite difficult to track enemies. You know, if you if, unless you know where the enemy is going, it's quite difficult to track enemies with gyro aim. That is the shit kicker right there. Gotta get so damn good at that shit. No need for me to really use gyro aim much right now. So I'm mostly using analog to turn my character. Another bonus to gyro aim is the fact that you can turn around like that. You can turn right the fuck around, turn right back to where you was looking, just like that. Just by moving your arms. Uh, I wanted to get that uh, cart rolling right there, even if I did have to take one hit. Ooh, you hear all them criticals, man? Crazy. You know, uh, the reason I'm not using uh, charged attacks is because I feel like if your criticals are high enough, you don't really need to use charge attacks at all. Just take advantage of the increased attack speed and uh, those chaos warriors is going to hit the ground pretty quick. Especially if Celt Spire calls out his uh, animosity. What was it animosity? But yeah, it's his ultimate. Especially if he uh, does his ultimate. You, you essentially have a 80% crit chance. But yeah, with all of her, you know, overcharge, crit, increase, her staff, her melee weapon, her trinket, I think you get a, a total of 85% crit chance. If I'm, if I'm correct, it's around there, 75 or 80% crit chance. Essentially, damn near all your attacks.
Yeah, this build is so damn fun. If if only uh you didn't have to sacrifice Volan's doctrine to uh you know use the increased movement speed. Because the Volans Doctrine really helps with these overcharge slowdown. So you can really uh, bring out the true colors of the the build uh, attack speed. Here we go now. I knew that was going to get aggroed. So, yeah, let's make him even more crack cocaine right here. Let's, let's make it even wackier. Absolutely crazy. Looks like I'm playing fucking Doom. This is fucking crazy. God damn. Playing Doom. In the situation where, you know, you have that much attack speed, you might as well just mash the attack button and let the criticals do the damage rather than using charge attacks. That's how you do it. That last attack right there, the the last attack of the combo does so much damn critical damage, especially if it hits the hit. Does like seven thousand critical damage. Into the portal while we still Oh there you have it folks. Seeing a cocaine build right there brings out the colors in their melee. Yeah, it feels really good to have Sienna do good in melee rather than just be rele relegated to that character that you know offers support in case uh, whenever the team gets in trouble with wave clearing and shit. It just feels so damn good to go in with that melee, Sienna. So glad I found out something to make that melee feel good. But yeah, guys, there you go, folks. Just wanted to share this build, y'all. Uh, I hope the rest of the Vermintide community appreciates uh, me looking into making Sienna feel like a better character to play. I know that she doesn't get picked all that often over the other characters. Uh, from what I hear, everybody else says uh, she's a weak character. But yeah, folks, there you go. Thanks for watching. Here is a quick overview of the talent points used in the Sienna Cocaine build, as well as the talent points used on the bots in the session to complement the build. I hope you guys get to have some fun with this. I got some little bonus clips here on the end. Thank you guys for watching. Come on, you see you, Barry.